Well, good afternoon. It's 2.22 and I'm not going to wait for any other time. That's the first triple digit since I finished writing the blurb. Uh, and I just woke up a little over an hour ago from a much needed nap. Anyway, the title for the video for the 22nd of uh, March, March, May, <laughs> is How Easily We Judge Others and Ourself. A scathing comment was made on the video for yesterday with derogatory remarks about my lady and her polyamorous lifestyle. I was invited by the writer to delete the comment and block her. I did neither. And when I talked to my friend about it, she amazed me one more time with her attitude of compassion. This is the reason why I find it so easy to love her. She makes up stories as to what might have caused this lady to respond so critically. We all make up stories to explain things that happen in our lives where we may not know all the details behind words or actions that hurt. Extra letter. I've been doing it to myself throughout my life, and I am usually far more critical of me than anyone in my life. If there was ever an area I know I need healing, this is it. <laughs> Indeed, I had a rough night last night. I probably got two segments of 45 minutes sleep, one in the early part of the night and one toward the end of the night. And so I needed to go back to bed this morning and try to get some more rest and I was able to get about three more hours which is really important for me. But once again I found myself in a situation where I was judging myself harshly. The details of my judgment are not as important as the realization that I have been doing this to myself throughout my life. When I don't measure up to my own expectations I tend to come down really hard on myself and it would be easy for me if I would stay there to fall into a deep depression. However, I allow the energy to move and I allow myself to let go to the best of my ability. Sometimes it's easier than others. Some things are easier to let go of than other things. But in any case, I know that I need to, to be able to let go even more quickly than I am sometimes. And my friend is in my world right now exactly to show me and demonstrate and model before me an attitude and behavior that is truly loving. Now, people can find it easy to criticize and judge others based on concepts that we've grown up with. Concepts of family, concepts of morality, concepts of, uh, of what a relationship is supposed to be. And people that deviate from the norm are often criticized and der der uh, derogatory remarks are set against them, sometimes even derogatory actions. I remember the story that my uh, friend Jack Nichols, who was the first gay man ever to appear on national television and openly admit he was a homosexual, and that was in 1962 on the Mike Wallace Show, and his name, of course, was Jack Nichols. He wrote for my magazine for a long time, and his article, Must Romance and Love End in Marriage, I still think is one of the best relationships I've ever, the best relationships, but one of the best articles I've ever read about relationships in my life. And he closes, of course, with, uh, with the words, let me grab the, the issue that it's in, the spiritual Howard Stern issue. Uh, let's see here. Wait a minute, it's on page 12, okay. Um, he ends it with the, uh, with the thing from, um, The Discourse, wait a minute, oh, Khal Khalil Gibran, okay, Discourse on, on, uh, on Marriage. And he said, love one another 
but not but make not a bond of love let it be a a moving sea between the shores of your souls fill each other's cup but drink from one cup but do not drink from one cup give me give one another your bread but eat not from the same loaf sing and dance together and be joyous but let each one of you be alone even as the strings of a lute are alone though they quiver with the same music <laughs> and i'm realizing i mean it's getting harder and harder for me to read without my glasses that's why i was a little bit stumbling and hesitating over some of the words because it was a little bit blurry and that's a good metaphor for how we see others in our lives and sometimes often actually how we see ourselves we may think we're seeing clearly but if we were to see the bigger picture when we're looking at the smaller picture we would realize that our vision is a little blurred we're not seeing exactly what it is that we think we're looking at and it's so easy to fall into the judgment trap. My friend has taken courses in compassionate communication, be peace, uh, and other other courses offered in Unity Heart Math, and and other things that are offered in Unity churches that have to do with 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 healing and have to do with how we perceive and see others, uh, how to live as with as if there's no one against us in the whole world. That's one of the courses I think she's mentioned that she's taken, presented by my friend Lloyd. In any case, she demonstrates for me the practical application of those. And I've, I've seen it, and, and we've had so many conversations with each other, and I've seen her again and again, how she puts these things that she's learned into practice. And she doesn't jump readily, if at all, to conclusions that I would jump to in, in many instances and conclusions that most people jump to. I mean, I see it all the time in comments and personal emails that I get, people uh, wondering, you know, where I'm coming from, like uh, somebody wanting to know what my beliefs are, like who, who are the they? That I'm talking about when I refer to that those that that do all these atrocious things that I referred to in the video that's up for today which when you listen to this it'll be yesterday yesterday's video who are the they well to me it's obvious who they are but as my friend would point out to me they also exist within us they are part of our world and we need to try our best to understand where they are coming from. And it's a challenge to do that, which is why I indicated in my blurb that I know I need healing in this area because I often still, with all the things that I've learned, with all the growth that, uh, that's happened in my life, I still have a tendency sometimes to forget my own lessons and to forget the things that really do make sense to me at the deepest levels. Nose itches. <laughs> and she demonstrates how she does it. Now, she's not perfect. None of us are perfect. None of us have arrived yet. We're all works in progress, each, each and every one of us. And I'm convinced that our ability to love and our ability to, to employ uh, methods of non-judgment to the best to, our, to the best of our capabilities. Now, it's, it's, it's not always easy because we live in a world where lots of things go wrong. Lots of expectations are dashed on the shores of reality, if you will. And they do not, things do not change and, and happen as easily and as quickly as we'd sometimes like. Certainly not when it comes to living in this world of, of what appears to be such, such gross injustice and such deception and corruption that appears everywhere. And I don't know all the time what the answer is. I am learning. I am living my life. I don't have as much as possible 
I try not to have such rigid beliefs anymore. As I said yesterday, I'm learning to flow like water and, and bend like a willow tree. I'm learning to be more flexible. I'm learning to hold on to my ideas and my attitudes with, with less rigidity and more compassion. And I'm having someone in my life demonstrate how this is done on a day-by-day, conversation-by-conversation level almost. And it amazes me the way she is showing love. She's not judging me. She's not judging others. That even, even those that criticize her, not even knowing who she is, not even knowing where she's coming from, just judging based on things that are revealed about her, like she chooses to be polyamorous, which means she chooses many loves. We should all be more willing to love one another because that is the center of all of our religions. That is the center of all of our spiritual practices. If it's not love, I suggest that it's not focused in the right place, that it's focused on something that is a majoring in a minor subject because the major subject we're here to deal with on this planet is to love. The Bible says, if you say you love God, but you do not love your neighbor, how can you love God when God is in your neighbor? If you say you love me and you don't show that love, something's wrong. Something's wrong because the Bible is clear that it's all about love. And it's not just the Bible. The Bible is what I'm familiar with. Sure, the Bible has been abused and misused. Sure, there have been things inserted into the Bible that make us judge, even though it says, judge not, that you be not judged. And whatsoever judgment you judge, you shall be judged. In other words, how you criticize others, that's the same measuring stick that your life is going to be measured by. Who's going to measure it? You are. You are going to measure your life by that divining rod, that, that ruler, that that measuring stick. You are going to measure yourself the same way that you measure others because that's the lens that you're seeing life through. That You derive the foundation for your judgments, the reason why you hurt others, the reason why you are so critical. And I'm really trying to learn this, folks. I'm really trying to learn it. I'm really trying to give myself the grace that I so easily and so often give others, but not totally, because sometimes it's hard to forget, forgive others when they seem to be violating the most essential of human rights, which I've talked about again and again and again. And who are they that do this? It's the people that are in leadership roles. They are the ones that are making the decisions. The people with the people who have controlled the financial system in our world, they are the ones. But if I put myself in their shoes, as my friend has encouraged me to do a number of times, I realize that, as I've said in other, maybe even in the video yesterday, I don't remember which one, but in a recent video, they have been raised to have the compassion and the empathy knocked out of them at an early age. They've been abused so badly that their conscience is, is seared so that they actually might believe that it's their right to, to do awful things. And they may not see them as awful because they see the world as overpopulated. So anything they can do to bring down the population and to create more pain and suffering and loss of life and loss of property, well, it's... It's doing something good. It, it may be a temporary evil, but with a high purpose in mind. The means may be corrupted, but the end uh, justifies those means. This is the reasoning in that. And I want to heal that. I want to heal that in the world so that we can have a world that works for everybody. And I know that that will work best when I stop judging myself so severely as I'm as I happen to do from time to time as I did last night 
and stop judging others so easily and start seeing the world through the lens of compassion, the lens of forgiveness, the lens of at least trying to understand why others might be doing what they're doing or saying what they're saying. Hurt people hurt people is an absolute truism to me. When we are hurting, we lash out often against others either in action or in words. But that doesn't resolve the issue that we're dealing with. It doesn't make us any better or draw us any more closely to the Creator that loves us all. In fact, it alienates us within ourselves and from one another. And I, for one, want to choose healing. And I will continue to tell the truth to the level of honesty that I'm able without injuring and hurting others and without revealing things that it's nobody else's business to know. <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening and have a wonderful day, evening, whatever time it is for you. Namaste and in Lakesh. Thank you.